Welcome to our service today. We thank you as family and friends for coming to be able to support and especially to be able to celebrate the life of our dear friend Nancy. Uh, there's no ignoring today the pain and sorrow and tears that exist physically and of course emotionally in our hearts. However, we still gather today to be able to celebrate not just the life that Nancy was able to lead here on this earth, but the life that our Savior was able to lead here on this earth, one that she is now able to be able to celebrate with him immediately, as we will all be able to join that exact same loving embrace of our Heavenly Father one day. Until that time, you and I take time on this earth to be able to celebrate what God has given to us in his promise and in the comfort of our Holy Savior, Jesus Christ. Just a couple of brief uh, announcements as we begin today. Please make sure you do have a bulletin with you. Uh, there will be some different elements of responsive either confession or readings today, so please do follow along with us. Number two, uh, after uh, the services have completed today, uh, you are invited to join us for a luncheon later on as well, uh, across the way in the worship center to be able to share your words and uh, just your feelings with the family that is here. At this time, I would ask that you please rise as we begin with our opening hymn, The Beautiful Words of Amazing Grace. make our beginning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Nancy was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united to him with a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give you thanks for your loving kindness shown to Nancy and to all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. 
Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we take a time for family sharing. Nancy was the best grandmother. She was almost like a mother to me. Whenever we needed anything, she would always be there with a smile. She would always be willing to listen regardless of how small the problem was. You knew she would always care regardless of what your problems were, and she would always be there, and she was always the one that would smile and make the day so much brighter regardless of how bad it was. She would always have the comforting words, and she always knew what to say when to say it and how to say it. She knew what you needed and her loving embrace and hugs were always make every, any day better regardless of what happened. Nancy will always be the best grandma and I will never forget the memories that she always had and the way she always valued friendship, family, regardless of who she, if she, even if she didn't know you and you saw her, the smile would always make your day even brighter. Nancy, my grandmother, held many titles. Great-grandmother, grandmother, grandmother, mother, wife, sister, daughter, friend, and woman of God. She loved my grandfather unconditionally, helped my father be the man he is today, and held her arms always open for a hug whenever needed. To me, she was just my grandmother. Some memories of spending time with her included cookies from the cookie jar, playing boats in her hot tub, making paper bugs to place around the house to scare people, finding Easter eggs in their old house in Arizona, climbing around the fireplace, um, the lovely beds of flowers they kept around their house up in Montana, driving in the car and having a piece of candy, scheming against Grandpa with post-it notes while he napped, and so much more. In my adult years, I was excited for my kids to meet her, to know the grandma that I knew and loved. I only regret that I didn't get to take the time to see her more often. She was a wonderful woman all the way until the end, and even now I still feel the love that radiated from her hugs and her smile that lit up the whole room. I love and miss you, Grandma, and I hope to see you again someday. I guarantee if you walk in a room (laughs) the first thing you noticed was this huge smile other people said you know she lit up the room she literally did but there was a little streak to her that would uh, get your attention. She had a schnauzer dog when I was younger. <laughs> she took him in and got him clipped. And, oh, he, he looked really nice for a schnauzer, just how they're supposed to look. And she was in the kitchen grilling steaks. I think we were building our indoor arena at the time. Anyway, uh, David, this one guy that worked for us, He came in and he thought that dog looked so funny and he started laughing and pointing at him. My mom never even said a word, just reached over, took one of the steaks off the grill, put it over to the side. (laughs) 
And it sat there for, I don't know, a little bit anyway, before David finally wondered what was up. And he said, what's with that steak? (laughs) My mom said, you don't poke fun at the cook's dog. (laughs) (laughs) But we had a lot of fun with my mom over the years. She always made sure, just like her dad did, her dad made sure everybody thought they were her favorite. And my mom tried to do that too. Um, She would go on shopping trips and take my sister places. She would come to major horse events with me to come watch me perform and whatnot. Just always made sure, even when I wanted to go to a roping school and it was a ways from home up by, by Kalispell, we hooked the horse trailer to her Cadillac well, I hooked it. She didn't. That the backing up part wasn't her. <laughs> Drove all the way up there, and I backed it in. Took my horse out, unhooked the trailer, and she went on to go see her sister up in Kalispell. Came back after the roping school. It was just how she was. You always knew she was happy to see you. She cared about you. And, yeah, she had a smile. And we also talked about the bliss cheeks, but that's another day. (laughs) When she would smile, her cheeks were just nice and round, and everybody related has the same issue. Um, My daughter that was just up here, she has a set of those bliss cheeks. Miss Kate has some. (laughs) Just keep going. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, I guess we'll get into um, the Old Testament reading. Uh, This is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, and the following. says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as fontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And we also have the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, a pa- you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. We hear these words today from John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him 
and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated at this time as we take a piece of meditation and a solo song.
Matt, the whole family and your friends and the whole church family gathered here this day. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I can't add much uh, to what the fa- family has already uh, so beautifully shared about Nancy. Um, seven and a half years uh, I've been here, I've known her. Uh, she absolutely brightened every day uh, that I got to see her, and certainly uh, on Sundays, uh, sitting in the old spot. You moved up quite a few rows from your normal spot. You threw me off this morning. Uh, but one of the first uh, faces I would see uh, coming in before church and one of the first hands to shake uh, leaving out the door. And she always had such kind words, uh, such encouraging things uh, to say to me, and I, I appreciate that very much. And it is uh, one of many, many examples, like some of you have already shared, uh, about just her kind heart, uh, her generous uh, love for for all people. And I'm so thankful for the legacy uh, that she has created and passed down in this family. Uh, And again, uh, you consider so many friends and coworkers and uh, as family too. And she certainly had that uh, powerful influence on all of us. That's why I kind of thought of the, the Deuteronomy reading of teaching uh, the truths of God's word to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. I think of Nancy, what an exceptional wife she was. I know recently, Matt, you talked about, uh, he said, uh, well, she took care of me for 60 years. I I can take care of her for five years. And uh, the good news is that uh, Jesus is taking care of her uh, forever now. I think of the, 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 the heart of the faith, the heart of her faith uh, that she passed down, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength, and how she passed that down to her children and her children's children and her children's children's children. What a tremendous blessing that is uh, to have that legacy. And I, I pray that that takes root in all of our hearts, uh, the faith that Nancy had in her Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we will uh, think about how much you enjoyed her smiling face greeting you when you walked into her house. Now think how joyous it is going to be when you will see her smiling face again greeting you into your new house. As Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for all of you. If it were not so, I wouldn't have said that. And if I go to prepare the place for you, I'm coming back for you so that you may be where I am also. That's the heart of our faith, and that is the bedrock of our hope as we move through grief. 65 years is a astounding Uh, accomplishment in itself in our world today. Uh, It's an amazing example of the type of love that a husband and wife have, should have, and you did have uh, for each other. But I've been with uh, spouses who have uh, lost uh, their loved one after one year of marriage and 65 years of marriage. And the grief is the same. The pain is the same intensity, uh, the same cycle, what they call the stages of grief. So I wanna talk a little bit about that process of, uh, of going through grief. There's a, there's a difference between grieving and being stuck in grief. And today is about that process of transforming the grief into the hope and the joy that God has promised us 
in Jesus. But it's not easy. As uh, Lamentations uh, writes, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, he said, um, I feel so overwhelmed by grief that I have forgotten what happiness is. I'm sure you've felt that way before. I'm sure all of you have felt that way at one point or another. So overwhelmed, you've just forgotten what happiness is. That, that door has shut. We don't know how, how to open it. But another place in John's Gospel, Jesus says, there is another door. I am the door. I am, as he said today, the way to the Father, to joy, to peace, to everlasting bliss and communion, the reunion uh, that we look forward to with God, with our Lord, with all of our family <clears throat> and friends. So grief is inevitable. Hold on. Grief is inevitable, but we don't want to get stuck in grief. There's a story about a student who who went to his uh, spiritual teacher and asked him about all of the prayers that he had learned and all of the practices he had been putting into place into his life. And he said, teacher, Will all of these prayers and all of these exercises, will they take away the grief? And the master said, no. (laughs) Why am I spending all of this time saying these prayers and and doing these spiritual disciplines and uh, so rigorously, so devotedly, so much time, so much energy And the teacher said, well, those things can't make uh, grief go away any more than you or me can make the sun rise. But the reason that we do these prayers and go to worship and have our devotions and whatever other spiritual exercises we do, says the reason we do all of these things diligently faithfully, is so that when the sun rises, we're not asleep. I think we need to realize there's this uh, powerlessness that we have when it comes to grief. It comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes, like waves, like a cycle, the day and night. But we want to put some disciplines in our lives that God has given us in his word and passed down from generation to generation, things that uh, he said is helpful. It's gonna ensure that we are awake when the sun rises. There's a number of methodologies and and, uh, ideas of of how to process grief, how to walk through this uh, difficult journey. I'm gonna share just mine, the one I I uh, found uh, super helpful. It's just four, four things, four uh, steps, if you will. Uh, number one, <clears throat> acknowledge your feelings. Don't mask them. Don't ignore them. Don't deny that they're there. Just ask, what am I feeling right now? How do I feel about this? And maybe it, it could even be helpful to write it down. Hey, today I really felt, hey, when I saw this photo album, it made me feel, and fill in the blank. But acknowledging our feelings and then saying the five most powerful words in English language, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Be honest, be open with Jesus, share your feelings, share your anger, uh, whatever it is. Maybe I feel like I'm uh, never gonna be 
uh, happy again. Maybe I'm just angry and I just want to rip somebody's face off. I feel guilty. I can't forgive myself. Acknowledge that those feelings are real. That we're, we're powerless in some way to control those things. And so we say, Jesus, I trust in you. This is where I am, but I, I trust in you. That's step one. Step two is a little more, a little more subtle. A lot of times when we find ourselves in the valley of the shadow of death, and when we find ourselves kind of in the intense moments, uh, those emotions, those, those, those grieving motion, emotions, we often get stuck there because of a lie that we've told ourselves. I'm never gonna be happy again. I'm never gonna uh, have someone love me that way again. I'm always going to be alone. There's a difference between our, our emotions, our feelings, and those lies that just, just are not true. So we're going to reject those lies in Jesus' name. I, I reject this lie that I will never uh, be fulfilled again in Jesus' name. I reject this lie that I'm just gonna die alone and unloved. I reject that in Jesus' name. So acknowledge our feelings, reject the lies, affirm the truth. Remember the promises of God and the evidence of the love of God all around our world, for sure, throughout history, of course, in our own, uh, uh, the bedrock of our faith, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sacrificed for our own sins, condemned to death so that we will never be content, condemned to an eternal death. Jesus Christ risen from the dead so that we too will rise and live the sun will rise again. The fourth step, I would say, is just ask for help. Ask for help in moving forward. Kind of look around and ask yourself, I guess, what, what, what am I doing that is harmful? Obviously, the harmful ways of dealing with grief and involve self-medication, alcohol or pills. Um, wrong ways dealing with grief are isolating ourselves, not wanting to be around uh, people, kind of wallowing in our own pity and grief. And ask God, for help. Jesus, help me to fill in the blank. Get out, meet some new friends. Um, find a, a hobby, something to enjoy here in God's world or with God's uh, fellow people. God, help me to fill in the blank. All right. So, four steps. Acknowledge our feelings. Uh, reject the lies that we tell ourselves. We're gonna affirm the truth that God tells us and just ask for help. Now, will this methodology Will this magically make all of the grief go away? No, no. But it will. Make sure you're awake when the sun does rise. And the sun will rise. May the peace of God which surpasses all our understandings keep our hearts and our minds 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand for our prayers this morning. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the family of Nancy and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Nancy and for all the blessings you bestowed on her here in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all grace, you sent your Son to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Father, your hand is heavy upon us now Teach us to understand your will and your ways. We thank you for the blessing that Nancy has been to us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Father, we thank you for the love that has called Nancy to your side and calls us to rejoice. Praise him, all creatures here below. Father, we thank you for the mercy that sent your own son into death so that we will never be defeated by death. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Father, we thank you for the love which through the resurrection of your son keeps us alive by your spirit even in the midst of death. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Take away the heaviness of our sorrow. Fill us with joy and let us share the peace of the undefeated life in Christ with Nancy forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.